Hello, everyone. We're just going to go ahead and get started here with the Arkham Intelligence and Base Partnership demo. So my name is Miguel Morel. I'm the founder and CEO of Arkham Intelligence, which is a blockchain analytics company focused on uh, providing data analytics to members of the cryptocurrency ecosystem. And today I'm going to be talking about bringing total cryptocurrency intelligence to the base ecosystem. So first and foremost, uh, what do we actually do at Arkham? Well, number one, uh, we work with traders. And so broadly speaking, traders tend to use multiple different kinds of information when they're trading. The first kind of information that they use tends to be asset fundamentals. So this would be the, the basics of that particular asset. Uh, things such as the looking at the balance sheet, looking at the executive team, uh, looking at how much money they might have in their treasury, cash flows they're producing. This is sort of the more Warren Buffett style of investing in order to make investment decisions. The second has become very popular over the previous one to two years, and that would be technical analysis, which uses fundamentally price data. And so this is sort of like the, the style of trading where you see people drawing lines uh, on pretty charts, looking at candlesticks, trying to decide what's bullish, what's bearish based on previous price action. But one of the things that we're attempting to do now is actually bring into the ecosystem significantly more transaction analysis. So this would mean actually looking at transaction data, analyzing the players who are investing or using a particular asset, looking at new entrants, looking at large transactions, insider activity, things of this nature. So what do we actually do at Arkham in order to give people access to this kind of intelligence? Well, number one, we start with public data, both on and off chain. Obviously, the cryptocurrency ecosystems and blockchains as a whole provide a very rich source of information and a very rich source of data in order to get access to transaction information. That's kind of the whole point, having transparency within blockchains. So we try to collect as much data as we possibly can, both on and off chain regarding cryptocurrency addresses and their owners. That then goes to our engineering and uh, data science teams who then put together a, a sort of story around who owns what particular group of addresses uh, and then assigning a particular confidence interval or probability that those are the actual owners of those attributions. Once that's all said and done, anything that's greater than 95% confidence and has been reviewed manually by one of our analysts then gets pushed to our platform for public usage uh, and then it can be seen actually in production. So what does Arkham actually enable then? What are the actual use cases? Why would you use our platform? Well, in a single platform, you can search for any individual uh, trading firm or exchange or company in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. And you can see a view of their portfolio. So that would mean the assets they own, their current holdings, so how much of that asset do they actually own? And then the implied net asset value once you put, multiply that by USD. You can see the balances, so that would mean the prices that they purchased at, their daily profits and losses, as well as their cumulative profit and loss. And then you can see their transactions, so that would be who they received from, who they sent to, and their overall exchange usage and other forms of services that they may have used. So now I'll actually present a live demo of what it's like to, to use the Arkham platform. So this is what the Arkham platform looks like live. This is uh, it in, in real time. So the, the fundamental kind of UI UX of Arkham looks very similar to a, a block explorer, but it's a little bit different in our actual depth of data. So right now in the top left, you can see network status, and this is uh, basically showing the user which networks we currently support. So right now we offer support for Ethereum, we offer support for Polygon, and we offer support for BNB chain. On the right hand side, you can see an aggregated view um, of every transaction that has been made on Polygon, Ethereum, and BNB, all in a single view. And this kind of gives you an overall sort of look back of every transaction that has been made on these chains. Now, this transaction panel is actually split into multiple different sectors. 
The first is time. So when did this transaction actually happen? You can see we're pulling in blocks just now. Who's the transaction from? So who is the sender or the seller of the token? So in this case, you can see we've attributed some of these addresses to Binance, Uniswap, um, PancakeSwap, Blur, Marketplace. Who was the transaction sent to? What was the overall crypto denominated value? What was the token that was sent? And then what is the USD value of that transaction? Where the Arkham platform gets interesting, and then I'll do a deeper dive into what our transaction panel actually allows, is when you would like to search for a particular individual or institution in the cryptocurrency ecosystem, you can search for them by name. So for example, here in the search bar, it says search for people, funds, exchanges, ENS, Twitter, as you please. So as an example for the demo, I will look at Gene Street, which is a large uh, market making and trading firm based out of New York. So I can just go into the uh, search bar, look up Gene Street. It'll give me a list of Arkham entities that are similar. I can click it and then it'll bring up a view of that entity. So now here we're looking at all of the activity for which we've been able to attribute Jane Street on the Arkham platform. We can see that they hold $456 million across these three chains, mostly in Ethereum. On the right hand side, you can see the balances history. So this shows that the addresses which we've attributed to Jane Street came alive sometime in March 2020, but then dramatically increased in value in December 2021 and ultimately reached something like an all-time high actually this past New Year's. In the bottom right, you can actually see all of the trades and transactions being made by Jane Street in real time. So you can see the most recent one was 39 minutes ago where Jane Street then sent $71,000 of Matic to Wintermute. If you would like to filter for particular kinds of cryptocurrency transactions that have occurred, then you can do so. So for example, if I'm interested only in seeing Jane Street's trades related to uh, Chainlink, then I can go to this token section, click filter, look up Chainlink. It'll bring up a list of tokens. Here I'll click Chainlink. And now I'm filtering just for Jane Street's transactions and trades related to Chainlink. I can do the same thing, but for USD value, maybe I only care about trades that are greater than $100,000. So I'll set the from $100,000 to anything larger than that. Click. And then it'll filter for all of the linked trades and transactions greater than $100,000 done by Jane Street, seen in a single view. Same thing for the other categories of the transaction panel. So you can filter only for the transactions from Jane Street to Binance or just from Binance to Jane Street. There's many different permutations about how you can use the filtering on the transaction panel. On the bottom left, then you get some more information about what services and other people they interact with on the blockchain. So for example, here we can see that Arkham has tracked $16.9 billion worth of their deposits onto exchanges and close to $10 billion worth of their withdrawals the majority of the time they use Binance, though we can also see that on occasion they used FTX as well previously. And then I have a list of every counterparty that we've managed to check, track them trading with. So that would include Binance, Coinbase, Wintermute, Cumberland, and a variety of other different players. If I don't want to see all of this information in a list view, but instead want to see an aggregated network analysis of Gene Street's trades and transactions and who they're actually interacting with, I can do that via our visualizer tool. So I can go in the top right, click visualize. And then now I can see it in a network analysis format. So I can zoom in here. So here you can see all of the different places where Jane Tree has moved money. You can see that they've used Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, Huobi, Binance US. Don't even have to look at the list. You can just see it all in one place. They also have a ton of trades with Wintermute, which you can see at the bottom right, mostly sending trades to them. Each one of these lines represents one transaction. So theoretically, I could click on a given transaction and then see more information about it. So this is a case where they sent money to Cumberland. 
If I click it, it'll open up an expanded view to provide information on that trade. So here I can see that this is money going from Cumberland to one of the Jane Street addresses. They received $17.5 million in USDC, and this was yesterday. And then I can see a broader list of every transaction that's shown in the Visualizer now, as well as a time series of all of their activity, which shows me that they basically had close to none up until 2022, roughly. So going back to the home page now, you can also see alerts. So for example, if you want to come in and then look at different alerts, for example, I'm interested in looking at Jane Street's Binance trades. I can set an alert for any time that any entity on the Arkham platform makes a trade which I'm interested in. So here I can see Jane Street's deposits to Binance, no matter the amount. And then I can set to receive an alert to uh, Telegram or I can receive it to email upon which then I can trade based on that information. One thing I missed earlier was actually, we, we also have the ability to give users our top entities. So if you just wanted to see a rolling list of all the largest players in crypto, that's actually here on the bottom left. Now, one of the final pieces, um, which I generally like showing people regarding intelligence on the Arkham platform, is if you click on an address, and we have not yet attributed that address to a particular person or a trading firm or another kind of institution, you can actually then label that address yourself. So if I go to add to entity, I could create new entity. I could say, you know, this one actually belongs to the base team. So even if Arkham doesn't necessarily know who's behind an address, maybe you do, I can go to create entity. And now this everywhere on the Arkham platform is labeled to the base team only on your version of Arkham. The data is never shared back to us or to any other user. So for any funds or other sorts of individuals who maintain large lists of attributions of addresses and who they belong to, you can come into the Arkham platform, label all of the different entities, and then have it only on your version in order to make it very useful. And that's the Arkham platform.